You have four chambers? Exactly right, like a cow. <laughs> <laughs> up, up at my office desk, I just chew my cud and, you know. <laughs> Ooh, Good, yep. yeah. You ever have your hand inside of one of those things? What? A they have big plugs in the side of the cows and you pull the plug out and you put your hand in, play with its stomach contents? I saw the glass thing at State Fair, but I never... And they're alive? Yeah. Why do they do that? So that you can teach kids uh, how cud works. What? <laughs> <laughs> this is new for you guys? Yes. Yes. Huh. So there's a cow with a live glass stomach. No, it has a no, it has, it has a like a in hole inside. in the side. It has like a grommet in the side of it with a big plug and you pull the plug out and you can put your hand in there and put a glove on first, right? One of those yes. big rubber gloves that goes yeah. up Does your it shoulder. Hurt? Does it hurt the cow? Mm, no. <laughs> Can't be not. I mean the plug <laughs> if you took the grommet out probably, but the the plug is inside the grommet. Cuz I'm just kind of thinking my own selfish reasons of how this could behoove my lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> I guess if you <laughs> implanted, <laughs> yeah, it could probably work. They make plugs. No, there was a guy back in the 1800s who had a he got shot in the stomach or something like that, and and he had a big hole that wouldn't heal. So a doctor played around in his stomach for like a year and a half. Wild. Whoa. Checking and that's how we out. learned a lot about how a uh, ah, digestive system works. Right. I like how you bring it to a conclusion. All right, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> way to way to wrap it up. Way to wrap it up. <laughs> Are, are we, uh, we're going, well, we're just still testing. We're, we're testing. We're here at the Harley Davidson Museum headquarters. No. No. No? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we then? <laughs> we're at the Harley Davidson Museum. <laughs> Isn't that the same it's thing? Not like there's a bunch of different ones, <laughs> and this is the main one. This, this is the one. In the midst of our <laughs> we'll exhibit. <laughs> All right, well, thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a double you know, shot? You know what tequila? I want to talk about is our is our shirts, just real quick. Is our shirts. And I was complimenting the, the round of shirts we have. Here. Apparently, plaid, I missed the memo. The plaid memo. But I want you to know it's that I really autumn. only have 10 shirts. And sometimes the podcasts repeat the shirt. And I tried to wear a new shirt. I watched last week's podcast, and I put on this shirt today. <laughs> Because I only have ten <laughs> shirts. <laughs> you look like you have a lot of shirts. Yeah, and they all say Harley Davidson. At does this point, I'm really having. Just, I got to go to a wedding this weekend. I'm looking in my closet, going, "Oh crap! What do I do?" <laughs> that's <laughs> that's <laughs> acceptable. I yeah, like I think it's acceptable, especially in Wisconsin. Yeah, it's not in Wisconsin. Ugh. Yeah, oh. <laughs> yeah, but you're 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 VIP. Okay. You you work for the company. Right, and when you walk in, they're like, "Oh, they're, everybody's mumbling with respect." There's the oh, dude, a- absolutely, yeah. There's the dude that runs the museum. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being promoted here. I like this. <laughs> <laughs> Up the chain of command, slowly. Well, what, what would you normally do here? I've actually I've been demoted from CEO now to just running the museum. Maybe and, we should figure know, out what his name is first. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, who who are you? What are we doing? Thanks for having us, by the way. Yeah. No, thanks, no problem. David. This is really cool that we're no really cool to have us here. Yeah. No problem. Well, what, what, David, where are we then? Why don't you give us a better description? Yeah, so we are in the midst of uh, the Mama Tried exhibit at the Harley Davidson Museum, the one and only Harley Davidson Museum. I'm making as notes. as my uh, communications guy always <laughs> says, um, and uh, it's uh, you know uh, I've forgotten what I'm talking about now because it's perfect. Communication where, where guy are was we? giving us. Where are fist. we? Yeah, we you know. yeah. So we're in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. I guess that's important to add, too. At the Harley Davidson Museum, and then zooming in further in the middle of the Mama Tried Flat Out Friday exhibit. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what uh, kind of part did you have in, in making all this work? So I'm the exhibits curator on staff, um, and uh, this is my job, putting together exhibits, uh, working with a team of really excellent people, actually, to put together exhibits. So this is a, this is a big party effort, really. Yeah, there's a lot of really great people back there. Yeah, and yeah. Yep. I mean, I've come to meet you here and like walk past meetings where there's like a whole bunch of talented people all sitting in a room, right? Know, coming up with all kinds of great ideas for yeah, stuff. I'm just one, I'm one cog <laughs> in the machine. So now I've devoted myself to the proper place in the uh, company hierarchy. Well, yeah. you're the uh, curator on staff. There's curators that are not on staff. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> one of the curators okay. on staff. Got it. I'm one of three. Okay, got it. You're one of three. And your name is David. David who? Well, you can properly introduce yourself. Uh, my name is David Kreidler. I'm the exhibits curator. Got at, it. Okay. Again, the one and only Harley Davidson Harley Museum. Museum. And, and so you said you were a part of this particular exhibit. Right. Can yep. I just jump right in with your permission, Warren and Scott? I was... I thought you were going to backpedal and do your uh, housekeeping. No, but I'm, I'm following up, I think, and what you were trying to say is why why the Mama Tried Flat Out Friday exhibit. Yeah, well, yeah, this sure. is 
David's idea. Yeah. So, so, are we so jumping in too soon? Should nope. there be a little romance, or are we just jumping <laughs> right know. in? You know. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think we should I think we should circle back. We don't need to go right for our dessert. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think we should. I think. What about housekeeping? Isn't that one one of the there things is a tradition here? But with the sti- st- uh, live studio audience, I was a little <laughs> thrown off. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure There's a I lot was. of people staring at us uh, right exactly. now. Exactly. So, uh, David, then just real quick, if we could pause for a second, these are my partners, uh, Warren and Scott. Have you have you met them before? Uh, never. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we do this podcast. This is our fifty fifth. Fifty fifth episode. Think, I think that's right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Brian's I demand a guy. recount. Right. 55th episode we've been Brian talking knows. with people of varying degrees related to motorcycles. Uh, and I, I'd be like to ask my partners, where's your head at? Because I don't see you guys much. Uh, Warren, where, where you, where's your head at? Where where you been? Uh, deep in the shop, un- unshoveling my, or getting out of my hole. But we've got, we've made, um, I've had Senior around a lot. We've been working on that giveaway bike, which is pretty cool. Senior's your father. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've got it tore it apart. It's the first time we've been in an M8 which is pretty cool too and do it with him is rad and kind of takes me back to when i first started working working with him um except now i get to boss him around mm-hmm. swear at him <laughs> i'd like it to come in and just watch a little yeah. bit is, it, is, is it as romantic as you remember it to be when you were a child and your father was yeah but roll re- but roll reversed you know like he's doing the dumb shit that i would do and he i have to yell at him because you know i like to talk about the life parabola and you know <laughs> The, the, the life what? The life parabola. You start out as a baby, you die as a baby. Oh. Right? We're getting deep. Oh, you start in diapers, you <laughs> die in diapers. Basically. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and he's on the other side of where he's like, meh. He's a child. Meh. Yeah, he's getting childlike. closer. Innocent yeah. and childlike. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I get to I get to be dad. You have the fever. <laughs> the fire. Yeah. yeah. You're like, do not leave that washer on top of that open. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Don't crankcase. touch that. Yeah. Please put something over that. <laughs> Scott, where's your head at? What are you doing? Uh, I'm good. I, I don't know. <laughs> you're, you're, where's your head Boring. at? My head's good. I'm I'm lo- I'm enjoying autumn. It's like a good transitional time in Wisconsin. Anybody who lives around here knows that we look forward to this. The summer is a little bit because we pack so much into a summer because we only have like four, you know, maybe five decent months. So it's just like nonstop. So I think autumn kind of signals the temperatures start dropping the excitement the Pump how many breaks. things you have yeah packed into a day seems to drop off i'm kind of excited to get back to some projects so yeah i'm loving it things are good all right i appreciate that scott i, I appreciate your slow tone <laughs> curl up in your words all right all right hey where my head's at if i can you know flat out friday tickets went on sale uh just the other day I don't, did you, do you know this I, I just I just heard about it. Yeah, yeah. me too. I just just yeah. discovered it. <laughs> Did you start your spreadsheet yet? Uh, on our social media, and we, apparently we're selling tickets. And tickets, bold statement, they're going really well. For really? Day two. Cool. Really? The front stretch is almost. You are. I know that you are. You're a good <laughs> monitor of that. Yeah. Finish line is almost is about half sold out. What's your alarm set at now? Two a.m. I haven't got a ticket report yet. In fact, <laughs> I called the uh, ticket master. Uh, we had I had a four thirty meeting with him. That's really where I was. Yeah. Uh, where where's my ticket report? I'm one day late. <laughs> 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 one day in, and you're like, oh, "What? Are, how are we doing? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> where are we at?" <laughs> uh, so tickets went on sale, and you know, I want to just address real quick. Uh, you, you know, these 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 fees. I don't want to start off on a negative, but these Ticketmaster fees they're yeah. they're outrageous and ridiculous. Yeah, and we hear you, people, people of the of the ticket overthrow revolution. You know, I think there's a way around that. You know, what we can do is just bury them in and not even talk about them. Our f- our tickets are one price. We should look at that. Yeah, but we never know what that price no. is. Either. I don't <laughs> know what that price That's not even possible. <laughs> We've never even knew known what that price is. <laughs> <laughs> that price is based on an algorithm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just like why you see your stories on social media, it's the same algorithm. Mm-hmm. We don't know. But anyway, they went on sale, and I hear your pain about ticket fees. But uh, like Pearl Jam, there's nothing we can do about it. <laughs> do you know this? Pearl Jam tried to sue Ticketmaster. Well, the, Okay. Was yeah. it Pearl Jam? I thought it was. Yeah. yeah. Was it? No, and Pearl they Jam. And they but, didn't get very far. But today. just like the end, the end boss at a video game, pew, 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 <laughs> they were shooting Ticketmaster, but then they lost, and then the boss got bigger. Hmm. So um, that's what happens when you mess with the, you, you, you fuck around and you found out, <laughs> Ticket there, Pearl Jam. <laughs> no swearing. Okay. David, thanks for being patient. No 
that's where our heads are at. I was just thinking that was an area I shouldn't comment on. You can so comment you whenever you and wherever. No, you are. I, I think I think and the, you can use the gentleman who I work with would come over here and probably hit me with yeah. a chair. We Let's can cut go. any of this no, out. Yeah, just just so you know, all of this stuff is. Uh, I'd love to see you get hit with a chair. By the way, <laughs> be good content. Yeah. It may happen. We're yeah. going for an hour. It could it could happen. Yeah, a cup of ice just comes flying across the table. Let me hear. God damn it. <laughs> David, I jumped in too quick. I need to slow it down uh, about asking you why the Flat Out Friday and Mama Tried exhibit here. Let's go back a little bit and learn a little, about, a little bit about yourself. Are you, are you from Milwaukee? No, I'm not. I'm from, um, depending on what part of my life we're talking about, I'm, I grew up in my teenage years in Kansas City, Missouri, outside Kansas City, Missouri. But you know what they say about <laughs> Missouri? <clears throat> they, they love company. <laughs> <laughs> Check, check, check. <laughs> okay, well, you grew up in Kansas City. And so what brought you here to Milwaukee? Uh, working here. So I'm, uh, I, strangely, I, did, I came to motorcycles professionally. I didn't come to motorcycles recreationally. Um, I'm a trained museum professional, as we like to say. I was going to say, say so. you yeah. came from the museum profession. I came for the museum, yeah. uh, specifically. And did what kind of museum work had you done prior? Uh, similar kind of job as what I'm doing now. So I was doing exhibits. I was, I was putting together exhibits, but, uh, At, not, uh, uh, no, um, it was a smaller museum, a much smaller museum in, in Omaha, Nebraska called the Durham Museum. Did they focus on something or was it just a, uh, kind of a hodgepodge, uh, but a lot more of, uh, Nebraska, Iowa history. Sure. Um, cool. so, you know, I did exhibits on, <laughs> yep. He's snoring over there. <laughs> snoring. You know, Omaha's a really fascinating city, yeah, by the way. No. Yeah. <laughs> the, ne- the Nebraskans. <laughs> and I'm the, just kidding. No and disrespect. The IOX are not but I find it fascinating that you would have had a durian museum in <laughs> Omaha, Nebraska. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever tasted durian? <laughs> no. Oof. Uh, Oof. It's gnarly. I bet it's even better when it gets stateside. Oh, when it's had time to ferment a little bit mm. inside the shell. Mm. <laughs> Well, okay, so you went to, you, you curated a museum. You, did you go to museum school? You have a degree in something. You're a smart guy. Yeah. No, I've got a master's in museum studies. That's yeah. a thing. That's wow. a thing. And no disrespect, but yeah. no. wow. Yeah, yeah, I've got a, a bachelor's in history and a master's in museum studies. When did, did you, you know you wanted to do that? Uh, pretty early. So what? I've been working actually in museums since I was 17. Damn. No way. Yeah. How'd that you just start? Couldn't they, your parents couldn't drag you out of the public museum? No, it, it, it started with history. Um and, and that and that was even earlier. I was maybe like nine or nine or ten when I was like, man, I love this stuff. Yeah. Just love it. And couldn't get enough of it. Um, and then, you know, looking for like that part-time Pizza Hut job. And I was like, I don't want to work at Pizza Hut. Yeah. And there was, a, there was a historic site right outside my hometown or in my hometown um, for Jesse James. Not not the vroom vroom, as I like to say, but sure. the bang bang. The bang All bang. All right. Really? Um, yeah. Uh, and got a job at his his childhood home giving tours that's cool 17 so awesome yeah. much better than pizza hut much better than pizza Hut. it was fun it was fun well, why, why oh, was right. jesse james a historical figure uh he he robbed banks and killed people and so why is that <laughs> so it was more, he was more infamous than famous well, no he's, right? he's he's a cultural icon i mean yeah. you think about all the people named jesse james um including the the vroom vroom guy uh you know so he's he's really well known um and is kind of this high kind of high culture in American culture. Um, what were some of the high points of the tour when you were t- talking about Jesse James? What are the sort of t- Jesse James oh talking man, you're points? Oh, ma- you're making me go way back now. Yeah, <laughs> just, just, a, just a couple <laughs> of them. Well, it was his family home, so it was, it was, mostly, it was mostly stories about his mother, who was a pistol. Um, just a really interesting woman. Yeah. It sounded very scary, but... Uh, no, that's why really. she created Jesse, right? Like, apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Well, in some sense, yeah. Yeah, I can see where where uh, the sons took after <laughs> <laughs> took after the mother in sure. that case. There sure. was a bunch of Jameses. Uh, there was Frank, his older brother. Okay. Um, she, I think she had eight children. Eight children. Whoa. Um, one died in the 1870s when uh, you guys know about the Pinkerton Detective Agency. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, they bombed the house. Uh, looking act- for Jesse, or yeah, just looking for Jesse, and killed the killed their ten year old half brother. Yeah. Um, wow. Uh, hey, you're going to have that on a job like that. <laughs> 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 Times were different. <laughs> so the first time I've lost so I have. I guess, <laughs> I guess that was the highlight of the job, but uh, no, that wasn't. Um, That's cool. Okay, but yeah, so. well, well, listening to you talk about that, I can see your eyes kind of roll back and you remember the immersive, uh, tech, uh, immersive research you had to do to get this role. Does that make sense? 
you must have done a, have oh. a lot of reading and to yeah. have to know and to be yeah. able to I think, answer I think questions. I think for every every exhibit I do, it's always a kind of a almost a start fresh um, with with topic. Um, sure. Or at least have it rattling around in my brain for a while. Where'd you go first with for Harley? Uh, my first exhibit for Harley? No, I mean like how'd you immerse yourself into you know the new role, right? You have to start <laughs> learning about so I kind of I, I kind of uh, arrived and started drinking from a fire hose almost immediately because I got I actually just passed ten years, so October of 2013, wow. and we had an exhibit that was opening up in June, the next year, and that's really fast. Yeah, and it's really fast when you know absolutely nothing <laughs> 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 about the subject doing, matter. About the subject matter, and there's a lot to know. And there's a lot to know. So that kind of, I think, with that exhibit, it would kind of lean more heavier into uh, the history side. Of it. it was about the American road trip, so I leaned heavier into my favorite. Yeah, yeah. Was that your favorite exhibit? It's my favorite thing to do. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Man, my ego's huge. I was like, is that no, your favorite exhibit? No. I, <laughs> did you do you remember this exhi- exhibition? No. No. Here in the museum, you don't remember. No. All right, we I don't have a memory like that. Scott's the one that remembers stuff like that. I did you go to? I'm that in one? and out. I I, re- I mean mm. I remember coming here, but I don't. Where was it at? It was over in the in the what was then at that point our temporary exhibit space across the street. Oh, okay. So it was a big that big ten thousand square foot space. Got it. I yeah. must not have came to that one. Yeah. Well, it was great. Yes. There's no doubt. Sure it, was. it was absolutely it fantastic. Was fantastic. It was the best exhibit I ever did. And it's a shame you missed it. That's the, right. Because I was the, there. And it no was going wonderful. Back. The big point was by the time <laughs> you were done with that, you were like. No. No. It, you really? know, I think with, with anything like when you talk about any subject matter, when you talk about motorcycling particularly, there's so much to know. And there's so much to figure out. So my next exhibit after that was drag racing, which is a whole completely different culture. Yeah. You're, you're immersing yourself in a completely yeah. different culture. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, and that was, you know, even more to learn, you know. So, you know, those learning about those because they almost are wired differently, some of those guys. <laughs> <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> right. Then even, you know, flat track racers, you know, the there's a bike sitting just in front of us, uh, a double engine dragster, uh, a guy raced that named T- Tater Gilmore. Um, from He was from Iowa or is from Iowa. And, uh, you know, I had lunch with him. I was like, oh, Tater, have you ever wrecked when you're doing a run? He's like, oh, yeah. And he starts to tell this story about him in Kansas City in the late 90s. And he's got, you know, a top fuel drag bike. And that goes 190 miles an hour. And he says, uh, so what I always do when I get to the when I get to the track is go down to the sand pit and look on the other side of the sand pit <laughs> and see what's there. <laughs> <laughs> and in this case, in Kansas City, oh, it's a bunch of trees. So I was like, you know, at that point, if something happens, I'm on my run and I need to get off. I just need to get off because if I skip over that sand pit, I'm going to die by, you know, get to right. yeah. those trees. So second or third run, he's running down the track and throttle sticks open. He's going 180 miles an hour and he gets off the bike. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> and one of his brothers who's with lunch with us was like, so imagine yourself driving down the interstate and deciding to get out of your car or, or get off your bike right. if you're riding at 70 or 80 miles an hour. Now, like, double that. And, you know, you... you breaks his back he breaks a bunch of bones you know really messes himself up and as soon as he can he's back on the bike yeah right he's alive <laughs> wow you know <laughs> just the like inherent that's risk that that is a completely di- and they're riding a bomb i right. mean you know on top of that they have to chain their engine down so it doesn't explode up into their chest yeah. i mean it's just a different kind of culture and a different kind of person that person who, who thinks like that, that and wants to do that so i got to learn about them and yeah. you know what, what are they doing and then do you have a do you have a favorite uh genre of motorcycle person no, I like I like it all, you know, honestly, because I like exploring new things. Sure, I like. Okay, this is new to me. I don't I don't know anything about this. I want to figure you, what this is about. You work in your sleep, or like you know, you obsess over this yeah. stuff, or can you turn it off? No, I usually <laughs> obsess. I don't have any hobbies. <laughs> this is a, this is a really a problem for me. I've, I've thought about it a long time. I'm like, I don't have any hobbies. This yeah. is. I've, I've loved this stuff since I was eight years old, nine years old. This was my hobby before it became my profession. He's a perfect man for the job. It's my profession. Wow. and that's awesome. And I really worry about if I ever lose my job, what I'm going to do. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine that uh, curator is, a, is not, uh, there's not many populated jobs on. Uh, it's not the one of the more popular <laughs> positions. And <laughs> even in the museum field, it's, it's, it's tough. If I raised money, I'd be pretty golden. But, sure. But, uh, um, it's not, it's, it's one of the rare positions in a museum cause you don't need that many people to do mm. it. Yeah, sure. What, 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 just again, listening to you talk about how you keep using the word immersive and immersing yourself. 
that must have been something you learned in museum school, right? The, that you have to, you have to almost become the characters within the museum, like what you did with Jesse James. Um, I don't know if I learned that in school, to be honest with you. I think it's just something that, you know, I think the thing that always has drawn me to history or, or cultural stories or stories about people are, are the stories, you know, um, and this idea of connectivity that we have with each other. Um, and the wild ways we can connect with with other things that are that seem like a million miles away. Yeah, you know. Right. Um, so I notice, you know, for instance, we have some tattoos here at the table. I don't know if you have any tattoos. Tattoos at the table. You have any favorite tattoos on your? Yeah, going I, somewhere with this. Yeah, it's yeah, got yeah. a lot. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. So, so you think about favorite tattoos, and if you ever do a company, maybe, or you do have a company, but if you ever do something like, oh, I'll use a tattoo as my my logo emblem. Do you know Macy's, the department store, their red star? That's a tattoo. That was R.H. Macy. He had a red tattoo from when he was a sailor. And really? that's what they psh, plopped up on there. Really? Plopped on the Very thing. And I always think about that and think <laughs> that's wild. You know, you'd think that's a million miles away from Macy. Mm. You know, what they are yeah, right. and, and what they yeah. are as a store and what they're, what, but that's a sailor's tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> that's wild. <laughs> but, but that's the ingenious of the connection with the common people. Right. Yeah. And all these wild things that we, we share and don't even know it. Sure. And you like to discover them. Yeah. And tell the stories. Right. Of the drag yeah. racer or the, or the flat tracker. Yeah. Um, uh, let, let me go back, though. I, before we get too deep, really, I have a dangling participle here because I really don't know who Jesse James is. You mentioned that he's very famous, <laughs> but so is Nickelback. And Nickelback okay, doesn't so have a museum. <laughs> You've never so heard of Jesse James? I've heard of him. But just in one sentence, why was he famous? He's Rob Banks, but just real quick, why did he... Why, uh, why? In one sentence. Um, three sentences. Uh, yeah, well... <laughs> Um, no. So why is he famous? No, go uh, on and on and on. Actually, yeah, no, it's, it. it's no, it's something that I, you know, I, I wondered then and I still wonder today. Um, so uh, Jesse came out of, um, you know, the period the Civil War, um, and in Kansas and Missouri particularly, uh, that was a brutal conflict. It wasn't like you know I think we all imagine lines of soldiers with their guns shooting at each other and battles and Gettysburg and, and all that stuff. There it was, they called it n uh, war to the knife and knife to the hilt. And so you had neighbors literally walking up and killing neighbors wow. um, because they're like, oh yeah. So that's, that's kind of the environment he grew up in. Sure. And yeah, when he's 16, he starts fighting in it as a gorilla and then he gets out of it and you're a little, I've always thought, yeah, like he's a little messed up. <laughs> It's like a state, a state versus state thing. It would, yeah, it was a Missouri versus Kansas thing. Um, in reality, because you know, uh, Missouri was a slave state and Kansas was a was free state. Was trying to be a free state, and yeah. that had been going on for like a decade mm -hmm. by the time the Civil War ended. Um, so he came out of that kind of environment, and afterwards no he uh, um, kind of just continued doing what he'd been doing before, which in this case was robbing banks, robbing trains. He was the first. Uh, his gang, I guess you'd say, him, it was called the James Younger Gang. They were all, anyway, getting too deep. Um, uh, mm -hmm. They were the first, you know, American train robbers, daylight train robbers. They'd stop a train, rob the thing. Broad daylight. Broad daylight. Yeah. Um, Bold. And, and say, um, my name is Jesse James. Yeah. And, and because of his connection back to, back to, you know, the, the South, he kind of got wrapped up into the lost cause mythos. And now he's like, you know, Bonnie and Clyde have that same kind of yeah. sheen to them where you kind of <laughs> lose track of Mythology. what he was doing. It was yeah. a little evil. You yeah. know, it wasn't nice. He, he killed a lot of people um, and he robbed a lot of people. And uh, uh, but he still became kind of a, a, a hero, folk hero, a folk hero. Sure. Yeah. So th well, thanks. That was a lot more no than problem. I expected. I really appreciate you going out. I was also an intern at the Truman Library. We can talk about okay. him next. <laughs> oh, wow. And we get as far away from motorcycles as we possibly can. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, that's what I, I, we want to talk about that. I want to. I want to use just that that language, you know, and then switch that over to motorcycles. So I just I like that base of just using Jesse James as an example, right? For how you use knowledge and and, and research to to immerse yourself, and I appreciate that about Jesse James because now. I feel confident you're steering the curation of this museum. <laughs> you you know what you're doing. The the captain is here. <laughs> you passed. Wait, so did you go to the Truman Museum? That was that your next gig? Or no, I was I was uh, you know all through college I was interning at different different museums and and different doing a different historical things and I was an intern at the at the Truman Library for about ten weeks I think in okay. the summer of my junior year after my junior year in college. Um, Where'd you go to college? Uh, Truman State University in Kirksville, Missouri. Got it. 
Um, it's way out in the middle of nowhere, unless you've been to Kirksville or going to Kirksville. It's not one of those places you kind of pass through. Okay. Specifically for, I mean... History, yeah. yeah. And, and that's a school known for that, or is just where it was close to you to go? And uh, it was in the state. It, we could afford it, and it was a, it's a good school. Sure. You know, it's still a good school. So. What, what, what makes a good museum? Just, you know, across the board. What um, makes a good museum? You know, that is kind of a subjective Sure, sure, but you are opinion. qualified in this field. And, and it kind of depends on what, what you're talking about, because there are different sizes of museums. So I can walk into a small museum, and they're going to be playing with a different size checkbook, and that's going to affect... But there must be an underlying right. theme, whether it's a, a roadside museum. <sighs> no. Is it easier if I ask you what is a bad museum? Um... No, it's not. It's not easier for that too. It it really is. Well, let's actually talk about motorcycle museums. You know, the way we do things here, we're very story oriented. You know, we're very interested in this motorcycle belonged to this person, or we have this kind of group of motorcycles that all have the same story. So you look at like Mama Tried. Here are these group of motorcycles. They all have the same story. Either they they've been in the show, or the people who built them have shown at Mama Tried a lot. And they're part of that story, and we want to talk about that story, you know. And so we're less interested in, let's talk about, you know, how big this engine is or, you know, what the mechanics are of this bike versus this bike versus this bike. We're not really, yeah. that's not something that we get into a lot. We do every once in a while, but it's not something like, man, we got to talk about that. Uh, we're more interested in what is this bike's place in, in, in Harley-Davidson history? What's this bike's place in, you know, even in American history? Um, how do these bikes fit together? What's right. what's their kind of full story? Right. So that's our museum. If you go to another motorcycle museum, what you might find is all the mechanical stuff. Sure. And that's going to get some people really interested. They're going to be like, "Oh, that's exactly what I want," and other people are going to be completely lost. So it 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 really is a subjective thing. Oh, this museum is bad. Well, this well I'm going to make good. a I'm going to make yeah. a, a bold prediction that what you think is a good museum is a connection to the to the the ticket buyer right is that, is that fair yeah if yeah you want to be able it's, to it, it's it's you know you have an audience in mind so yeah who, who you, is you want who a wide audience you don't want just a, a narrow-minded kind of yeah well thing. i was gonna say i i always when people are visiting milwaukee and i always tell them you know go to the harley davidson museum and they'll be like well i'm not really into bikes i'm like it doesn't matter because right. you can come here, and I think that's an indication of a good museum. If it's if it's subject matter that you're not interested in, but you still get drawn in, right? Isn't that, that's a museum? Yeah, that's I think its, that that is done its job, and done I feel its like job. I think yeah. that you guys do that here very well. Yeah, but I also don't want to discount the other museum, the no. other type of museum, yeah, because no, it course. does it does have its place. It does serve a purpose. It does right. serve. Uh, somebody it's audience it's just not the audience that we selected yes sure well, well not only does it have a place as a, as a ticket buyer and, a, and a, an attraction as a museum it has a place in preserving that history right there's a place to preserve the mechanical history exactly and there's a place to preserve the social history for right lack of a better word of what you're, you're doing here right mm -hmm. all right at least we got that figured out <laughs> <laughs> David, <laughs> do, you, do you have a favorite museum uh, I have many favorite museums Whoa. yeah um, uh, yeah. Oh, geez. Let me, yeah. Where do we start? Yeah. Um, because I I also I love museums. I, I love museums. And then I have favorite exhibits. It's even more complicated. Really? Yeah. Um, exhibits that don't even exist anymore. Yeah. It just blew me away. Um, so favorite museums. Uh, Does an exhibit come to mind? Yeah. The uh, actually the, the exhibit I got that R H Macy factoid from. I was yeah. in um, Philadelphia in 2007, and the Independence Seaport Museum was putting on a sailors tattoo exhibit uh skin oh, and wow. bones and it was just this really kind of cool like they went back to you know here's here's where here's where tattoos were developed and here's their importance in in american history for sailors and pacific specifically and here's how they kind of evolved over time into the industry we know today um and here's still these sailor traditions you know there are traditional sailor tattoos that they still get you mm -hmm. know when they're sailors sure yeah. Uh, pigs and chicken on their feet because pigs and chicken you know the old old myth was that pigs and chicken don't go down they don't drown oh. <laughs> and so you put tattoos <laughs> on your feet or somewhere <laughs> on your body and you won't drown if All the right. boat goes down at sea right. um so sparrows on your chest that kind of mark how how many nautical miles you've completed or something like that okay. and, and so they've got all these tattoos so that was my still is i think 
that because that blew me away because I didn't I walked into that place much like people walk into this place I think and go I don't know anything about tattoos I don't know anything about sales yeah unbiased unbiased I walk in and I'm just blown away because they connected it to weird things and connected to things in my life and mm-hmm. then their presentation was just amazing and they answered questions I didn't even know I had uh, about tattoos right you know and you just found yourself in that town just randomly and uh, I was there for a conference yeah yeah so that uh, wasn't random but yeah. uh, but uh, it was. But you're mm-hmm. like, oh, what do they got to offer? And you exactly. looked it up, looked up the museum listings, and you're like, yeah, I'm gonna go check this basically. out. Basically, yeah. yeah, that's cool. It was a museum conference, so that. it was even better. So we already knew. Oh, kinda yeah, I suppose. <laughs> <what we're doing. laughs> I would but love. I I I would love. I would love to go to a museum conference. I feel like that would be really <laughs> well interesting. Uh, I saw a little spark. I know yeah, it. It. it uh, because you know, it it can be a draining day. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're sitting in round tables, much like this, talking about museums all day, and even me at a wa- at, at about you know hour five, I'm just kind of like I am done with this. Really? <laughs> Have you been to Mama Tried? <laughs> 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 Without the tables. Well, there you go. <laughs> there you go. You already know what it feels. You don't even go to the conference now. Um, but Just kidding. I love it. Yeah. Right. yeah. Uh, favorite museums, though. Um, geez, where do I start? Uh, Corning Museum of Glass in Corning, New York. Oh, right. Um, uh, I've driven past those signs a bunch oh, of times. It is an amazing, really amazing place. That's yeah. cool. Uh, again, all glass, which is again, something you're like, oh who cares about that but it's like an art museum stacked into a history museum stacked into a you know they got programs there where you can actually go blow glass and and get involved on that level too so it's just an amazing place that's cool um smaller museums the american mountaineering museum in golden colorado uh another place that kind of immerses you into this subject matter you didn't think you really cared about it i do not climb mountains i'm afraid of heights yeah um but uh really great small presentation of what is mountaineering very and, cool and why do people do those things very cool. so um yeah i could go on and on and, <laughs> well, and when, on. You, when you walk into the museum conference this is yeah. an annual thing yeah and it travels it's in san francisco travels, one year and yeah yeah, Cincinnati. And when, and when you walk in, are you like, you know, the doors open up and you walk into the hall <laughs> and they hear your boots <laughs> clicking and you're like, that's David from the from the Harley no, Museum. No, I'm, I'm one of the least uh, impressive uh, professionals. No, in, in it the can't be. It can't be. <laughs> <laughs> what are some of the workshops that they put on at, uh, um, at the annual museum <sighs> conference? Hum- humidity. Well, well no, hum- that that does come up. Truth that does or, come fault up. or fiction? <laughs> um, you know, so it'd be like you know, you, you laugh at that, but it's it, that that could be one of the topics that yeah. they cover. You know, like the really technical stuff because you, there's a whole science aspect to what we do here because our jobs. You know, I I put the stories out, I put them out, but the base of my job is 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 making sure that this collection and everything that's in it is around for the next hundred and twenty years. Sure. Right? You know, so that it passes on to the next generation, the next generation, the next generation out of that. So we do end up talking a lot about, okay, humidity and its effect on things like, okay, how do you, how does it affect leather? How does it affect metal? How does it affect, and there are different, right? you know, and that changes over time as the yeah. science changes. So And UV rays. UV right? rays, you know. Um, Good question, Warren. Yeah. It wasn't my yeah, question. It wasn't was a question. It? You, it was a joke at my expense, but... <laughs> 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 well, good good foresight. <laughs> the only reason I, I remember that is because uh, when they were they were emptying my bike of the oil, which there barely wasn't any in it. Uh, As I recall, uh, Bill Redenso wanted more to report you for knucklehead abuse. And <laughs> yeah, I, we didn't know who he was going to report you to. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, hey, Bill. Of his la- in his last week. <laughs> that was his right, last yeah. week. He was draining the bike. He's like, Warren. Oh, I can't believe it. I, uh, <laughs> I was like, well, Bill. Why don't while you're at it, why don't you just spray them cylinders down? It's gonna be sitting for a while. Like, hey, there's no humidity in that place. I'm like, oh, sh- sorry, Bill. <laughs> Glad you're leaving. Jeez. That's awesome. Well, if Bill was alive today, he'd love to see that. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Bill. Love you, buddy. Oh yeah. Oh, we miss old Bill. <laughs> But yeah, much like the much like the conference, you walk in like the, like the star. You'll be walking into this wedding this weekend <coughs> in your Harley Davidson gear. <laughs> and spurs on. <laughs> it was yep, spurs on. Exactly. Yep. Well, let me let me answer the let me re ask the question. You said when you were attracted as a young child to the, to the museum sciences, 
Can you go back to the eight-year-old you and, and know what a what a good museum was then? No, and it wasn't. It wasn't. Mu- museums came a little bit later, not until I was a teenager. It was really just originally just like a sense of history. Wonder. I was probably the only eight or nine-year-old with a subscription to the American Civil War magazine. <laughs> okay. <All right>. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Easy, buddy. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> Is that uh, still a periodical? I have no idea. I haven't had a subscription for years, but uh, I, 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 had, awesome. for, I had it for awesome. years. I had it for years. I now you it. subscribe to a museum monthly. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> museum Science Monthly. <laughs> museum Science Digest. Hey, but but Scott, uh, what were your favorite museums? Just a couple of yours, because again, we're not even we're not making a joke at your expense. And of course, you are highly respected amongst us. But uh, Scott, what what was your museums? Mm. You and I have been to many. Any time we travel to a show. Scott drags us to a museum. Really? True fact. <laughs> really? Name drags. One. Do you guys remember? Brazil? You wouldn't remember one. I can one just start Brazil. naming them and you can say, yeah, museum. Yeah, Wait, Brazilian I was, one. Uh, I was thinking about the, um, this is this is an exhibition, not the museum, but when the art of the motorcycle was at the, was at the mu- yeah, well, it was at, originally at the Guggenheim and then traveled when it came to yeah. Chicago, I think it was a museum of science and industry. Right. Man, that was cool. Did you get to go see? I mean, did you no, did you know about that? Like in the world of museum? Yeah, we 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 talk culture. about those kind of because um, that was a groundbreaking kind of exhibit. Um, you know, the there is especially within the art world that was a groundbreaking exhibit because that was not there. That was not done. Then. That was not what they did in right. the art museums back then. Because and that kind of like changed everything. It was like, oh, wait a second. We can, we can do something that's not paintings and sculpture. Right. And we can talk about stuff that other people might find, you know, not art, but right. but as art. Yes. Sure. That's true. That's true. Well, that was that was that was one of my favorite things. Plus, it made a lot of money. And that's always of interest. Yeah, there was a huge line <laughs> for that. Yes. Oh, well, we pe- struck a people nerve. saw the dollar signs, right? <laughs> exactly. And then, so then they decided. I mean, did th- th- did that change a lot of things in the museum world? Like, the people started putting together traveling collections of all kinds of things. That'd that been going on for a while. You know, that that's that, you know uh, probably more famous than the art of the motorcycle is the King Tut exhibit that oh, traveled right. around and it started traveling in the seventies. Whoa, uh, that was seventies, seventy six, seventy seven. Um, I'm not sure, but I'm glad. Is probably there are no museum people watching this. <laughs> 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 well, no, was that well, so? How does that work? Is that like a private? Is it like a, is no, it like a privately I, financed thing? Can, like anybody, like anybody can do it. There are there are like private companies that put together sure. traveling exhibits. But at that time, was it like like Egypt put it together and was no like e- making e- money from it or put that together? You know, I want to say it was the British Met. Museum or something. Or so, yeah, it was yeah. it was one of the big big okay. ones. Um, they uh, play general contractor and find all the pieces and put it all together. Yeah, in a sense, but that's what that's what our jobs are anyway. To be honest with you, it's it's like okay, uh, you know, when I when I go into curate an exhibit, it's it's okay. I've got I've got a story I want to tell. Now, what can I find to tell it? Got it. Because you know, if I can't find the things, I can't talk about it. Sure. Right. You know, because I'm not writing a book. You know, right. with a bunch of words on a page, I've got to actually have the physical artifact. And in fact, I've got to have the right physical artifacts yeah to talk about to stitch everything together to stitch the stuff together right. yeah so you're doing that naturally already yeah uh with traveling it just adds a layer of all that shipping crating which can get kind of interesting um security but did that kick off stuff like that um there was an exhibition of like all those the human body it was like all those oh people yeah. with their with their muscles that so were that was like private uh, both both body works and body world the smell but that was one of, of the that. F- that was one of the first Ooh. like traveling non no 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 they, it's been going on for a while really? it, you know i think it came into again king tut was like in the 70s okay. or something like that that was in the 2000s 90s like 90s early 2000s okay um uh so yeah i actually think the Smithsonian in the united states i think the Smithsonian started traveling making exhibitions there, and yeah sending them out a while a okay. while ago okay um uh, and I can go to the deep, long history of that, but right. I'll, I'll skip over that because that gets into 
<laughs> no, I don't. I don't mind listening to that. I think, I think this you is and not Scott. where I was expecting this conversation to go you at all. <laughs> we talked about. We say that every week. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you and Scott have a newfound uh, yeah. appreciation Maybe, of each other, yeah, and we'll be going we'll to back Coney Coney hour, together. <laughs> we're gonna go to Coney right, right, I think this right, is a different right. podcast all we're getting right, into. I gotta right, be honest with all you. Right. <laughs> all right, let's. Reel it in. Reel it in. Reel it in. You guys are getting a little didactic. Ooh, did he use it right? Yeah, he did. Well, you guys are both throwing around these words, parabola. I don't. <laughs> yeah, I saw your eyes like light up, like say, come again. <laughs> uh, Scott is the um, is the smart one on our team. <laughs> <laughs> so you see how lovely people laugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. It's the glasses. He's accused of that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Ten so IQ points right there. Mm, the glasses. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, l- let's bring it back then, uh, if, if I can. We've already kind of answered this, but I want to give you the question fairly for you to answer yourself. Um, the philosophy of this museum. Uh, you hinted that it, you want to tell, you, you tell the story, uh, the, the social story. Uh, you want to uh, engage people um, with a personal connection. C- can you, what am I missing? What else is there? No, I think that that's about it, you know, to be honest with you. Um, uh, so I, uh, when I joined this team, the team that I joined was the original team, and I think they they saw that you know the the true superpower of of Harley Davidson, the motor company, is not its bikes; it's the people that are involved with its bikes, that ride its bikes, that, that work here at the company. Um, and there were some really fascinating, interesting people, and there were some really fascinating, interesting stories uh, to be told. Mm-hmm. And um, so that's what they set out to do uh, was to tell to tell those stories of, of those people and 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 quite remarkable quite remarkable collection you know, this this is an astounding collection to be honest with you uh, for any museum not not just for a motorcycle museum but for any museum when you have things or artifacts that go back to the beginning the inception moment of of something it and then it's still all together 120 years later it's it's pretty remarkable well so you you're, but uh, you're almost contradicting the philosophical statement because now you're looking at it for more mechanical well when it's, you use it's the word astounding it, you're connecting it to mechanical no i'm not I'm, so so for instance um you know the the we've got a 1901 drawing upstairs um which is ironically a blueprint for a bicycle engine mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, connecting to the mechanical. But you think about that, and you take a step away from the mechanical, and you think about that. That was a 20-something-year-old William Harley and a 20-something-year-old Arthur Davidson screwing around, you know, with this newfangled thing. You know, they were they were basically, you know, I always compare it to Steve Jobs and, right, and all those guys screwing around in their garages with this yeah. new fangled, you know, invention, the computer. And, right. and here are these guys screwing around with this yeah. newfangled invention the, the motorcycle internal combustion, best, you know, internal combustion engine yeah. and and they're like oh cool you know let's, let's see what we can do with this and and uh with uh, that dreamy with that 20 exactly. year old enthusiasm exactly yeah you can do and, anything and you think about that you know I, I always compare it to again compare it to computers but it was a game changer you know that the internal combustion engine before that before people had their personal cars, their personal motorcycles, <laughs> they were, they were. Oh, yeah, I got to take a train. Oh, I've got to, I've got to get on my horse. Get on my horse. horse. You know, I've got to walk. walk to wherever I'm going. I've got to get on a boat. I've got to get on a. It was either mass transportation, or you used your own two legs, or you had to feed something. You had to feed a horse. You had to feed, you know, whatever you're riding, mule, whatever it was. And then first the bicycle comes along and people are, what the, what is this? You mean I can park it in my house and I can get on it and I can go? That's game sure, changer. So that's, so that's the aha <laughs> moment of, the, of, of, of why freedom is connected to motorcycles. I mean, I, I know yeah. I'm stating the obvious, but when you put it in a historical context, that freedom was not there. You know, we, we, we take the word right. freedom now for granted, but imagine the time when there wasn't the personal freedom to ride a fairly small sized machine and go anywhere you wanted to go. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. your, your circumference of, you know, however you, you looked at it, grew exponentially. You can reach, you know, uh, you know a lot farther. You can go to the next go town anywhere. or the county. You can go across the country. The yeah. country and you can go country yeah. fast. Yeah. You know, it was really an amazing invention, um, the combustion engine. And it just, we, we, I think we take it for granted today in a lot of, like, a lot of things. 
kind of plateaus and it becomes just part of everyday life and and you're like okay i can get my car and i can drive to the store five miles away well you know like 10 miles pre <laughs> pre-combustion engine that's an all-day trip you know that's right. not a that's not a like oh yeah. i'm gonna go to the yeah. restaurant I'm gonna half day road coming out of exactly. chicago exactly yeah. right or right. like a lot of people never even left that that m- yeah. amount of you know right 10 20 miles of their whole lives yeah yeah, yeah. So, um, well, 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 uh, well I, I distracted so I, you I guess I, I, I from I, the philosophy of the right, museum. Right, but, but I'm con- contradicting your contradiction of my contradiction. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> uh, to say you can't, you can't divorce really the technical from, from the social when you're talking about, about this. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's, people love it, and that's what they get into. That's what they, you know, the builders who build these motorcycles. Well, that's, that's the, like the fly to light, right? Right. The people, the motorcycles bring folks in, but... When you start diving in and learning and talking, and it really is right. it's social, and it's yeah, and you know, it all just kind of gets muddy and, and yeah. cooler. Yeah, the longer you and stick that, around, and that's that's history. Yeah, you know, it has all these points, and and what we try to do here is really kind of connect people to those points. The people we focus the most on as an audience, when we do tell stories, is the people who don't have any experience with motorcycles. Because honestly, I don't probably have to write a panel for either of you. You could probably wander through here with each other and have a perfectly awesome visit without ever reading a label. Yeah. Um, oh, look at that knucklehead. Oh, look at that panhead. Let's talk about that panhead. Let's talk about that panhead. Let's talk about, you know, the Evo engine. Let's talk about, you know, you don't need me. You don't you don't need my hand holding. But it's for right. the people I, I, who. I do. Okay, well, <laughs> Jeremy does. <laughs> but it's for, th- it's for the Jeremys of the world yeah. who don't know anything. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how do we connect somebody who has never touched a wrench in their life? to a machine sure no well i appreciate that so so just real quick why i asked that question uh, is when you're curating you 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 have an idea for your curation and you have to match it to that philosophy is this idea of jelly beans going to match the philosophy of the harley davidson museum and right. no no it is not so that will not be a good exhibit i think bama tried or flat out friday the, with the philosophy broad statement of bringing it together we we go into some wormhole spending money on a band or something and then we have to ask ourselves wait a minute is this really going to be bringing people together it's not let's nix it part of the this core is, concept I mean, yeah right. does this make sense keeping yeah. a core philosophy that's just why right. i ask yours yeah right. just the experience i mean you're use the band example of like we've tried a lot right to keep to garner people's attention but really all they want to do is hang out with each other yeah right like we've so learned 10 years it took us to learn that <laughs> <laughs> i don't i don't think we'll stop pushing that but you know yeah. that's just how we are but so I cut you off. You guys both had something you were going to say. I cut you off. Warren. Maybe you guys I should bring it. paper and pencil. No, I was going to say, besides our exhibit, what's the coolest one <laughs> <laughs> that you've been that's a part of for, like the, for the last 10 years? Favorite child there. Yeah. Um, I'm kidding. What's your favorite kidding, tattoo, of course. Scott? Yeah, what's your favorite <laughs> tattoo? No, well, what, are some, what, are some, what are some good good ones that you like that are memorable or that you enjoyed working on? Um. Well, there was I kind of went into drag racing, racing a little bit. That was yeah. that was a really fascinating, um, fascinating topic to get into. And and at the time, because we had the bigger space at that point, we had ten thousand square feet. Um, you know, I also got into the car side of things a little bit too, um, which was another interesting kind of like, oh, this is, you know, just from a cultural standpoint, from a social standpoint, from a from history standpoint, drag racing is a lot different from other forms of of racing. So just getting, kind of getting involved in that I was like, oh, this is this is something absolutely different. Right. Um, How immersed do you get? Are you going to drag strips or? Yeah. So I went, uh, you know, went to a few races when I was researching that, um, and you know that that can be really important. Um, it sometimes it doesn't translate well. Uh, I don't know if you have you ever been to do a, like a NHRA drag race. I have not. I've never been to. So that is it, it is a full body experience, <laughs> especially when the top fuel cars are going. <laughs> right. You know, because it's like that is the loudest, one of the loudest sounds on earth. Right. You know, and when you those things it. fire off. Yeah. And you feel it. You feel the sound. And yeah, it takes your breath away. It's it does. It really does. It's like, a you know, it's just the concussion of those engines going. And you think about the power that's kind of going through those cars or those motorcycles at the time that they fire off like that. It's just enormous. Um, so in, in cases like that, it'd be like, okay, how do I translate something that's 
a feeling right. into a static experience right. that is that is an that is an exhibit, and you know that's where you kind of sometimes fail, sometimes succeed. You know, as you're trying to get that, that was a lot of imagery, and that was also statements of facts, like a top fuel drag car is accelerating faster than the space shuttle. You know, when it launches off the pad. Wow. Um, uh, so you're trying to connect to things that people like already see as amazing or already kind of have some connection to. Right. Um, geez, uh, you know, the the very first exhibit I did here, that kind of whirlwind exhibit was on the American road trip, which was just, again, really fascinating. And I always, you know, honestly, the most fascinating part for me is always the people I get to meet right. when I'm doing the job. You know, oh, I get to talk to this person, I get to talk to this person. Uh, so like the American road trip, there was a, there was a guy in Portland, um, vintageroadside.com, uh, <laughs> who collects like old roadside paraphernalia okay. and, and and his whole collection his house is just filled with this stuff uh really random stuff and you're, you're just amazed that a it still exists from the 50s the 60s uh that it's still still around uh and just some kind of incredible he had he had <laughs> uh talking about missouri uh he had mermaid tails from a water <laughs> show in Branson, <laughs> all right. <laughs> you know, in the from the sixties. Wow. He's like sequined. Um, you know the the you know the mermaids that yeah. that swim yeah, underwater. Yeah, you know, with yeah. the tubes. And so there was one of those in Missouri for a long time, and he had costumes from that from that performance. And this is like the closed in like seventy two. That's he's amazing. Got this tail from that. Um, Does he have a museum? No, he doesn't. It's just all in his house. Fantastic photo collection. Uh, color photographs from the 50s and wow. 60s and so really interesting person to meet um i the did a exhibit on just daredevils in general um you know so talked about motorcyclists and and but then also got into you know a little bit of nitro circus and talked a little bit about you do the old circus performers that that got up and and you get to see some amazing collections that way um and then this one That's this cool. one was this one was fascinating too when you get feedback from custom, like when from people, I try from not ticket to. buyers. But yeah, no, <laughs> but I mean, I mean, anecdotally, right? Do you must hear stuff like, is it? Do ki- who who really like? What are their favorite things? Do kids love the things that they can they can go climb on a motorcycle and uh, you know, can sit on one, or like the video parts, or people come in and just like the history of all the t- you know every different model and you know I I, I th- there are kind of general rules of thumb that we have when we're putting together an exhibit anymore. Um, you know, video works really well. Right. Uh, it's something that is is moving. It's not static. It's it's right. changing. It's it, that. So that always helps. Um, uh, you know, interactivity. So what can I do while I'm here? Right. Um, instead of just walk around. Instead and look of just at look, stuff. walk around and look at stuff. Um, uh, you know, and then how do you how do you word things? What, what are you saying actually on the labels? What are you putting on the labels? You know, where is that experience in the museum taking place? You know, so if it's at the end of the museum, I'm not going to, no one's going to be reading my labels at that point. So I've either got to really punch them up or I've got to uh, dial it back a lot. Right. So, um, yeah. yeah. Go, going so. back to your last point, you, you were talking about the different exhibits you've seen or curated over the years. And you, you, you touched on this. Let me, let me semicolon for a second. I too am a history. I uh, have a BA in history, uh, and I and I have I feel a connection with the language you're using, of how I I find it fascinating to go into a bowling community, a, a bicycle community, a hockey community, um, and then find the strands that unite them, that unite each other. Right. And I think that you also do that. Yeah. No, that's that's the thing in history that I got most fascinated with. Yes. I, I appreciate that, that connection with you. Good. Thanks for articulating. No problem. That's, that's no problem. I like, the con- I like that. <laughs> <laughs> so let, if, is it proper now? Is it okay with you guys if I ask why Mama tried Flat Out Fridays in the Harley <laughs> Davidson Museum? Is this appropriate at this point? Do we have enough backstory a, with this guy? I think it's yeah. a good time to okay. bring it up. Yeah. What, what, how do you think this exhibit fits in your philosophy of this, this building? You know, what I like to do when I get the chance and opportunity to... Um, and this is for everybody, not just people who are getting introduced to the motorcycle world, but also for, for seasoned vets of, of the culture um, who have been around for a long time is, is in, in essence, get them to stop and smell the roses for a minute. You know, you see this stuff all the time, um, but 
let's talk about the motorcycle show, you know, because the why at the museum, uh, it kind of fits in a lot of different for areas for us, you know, as a motor company in our history, uh, motorcycle shows are important. Custom culture is, is just generally important um, because that's core kind of knowledge base that, that our des- motorcycle designers, our engineers know uh, as they follow the market and, and follow what people are doing in the market so that they can produce a motorcycle that people will buy. Well, people will buy. Exactly. People will find exciting. Um, you know, famously, Street Clyde is, is one of those types of motorcycles where you know, what they were looking at and the custom culture is people, you know, tearing down their baggers and ripping off all the bags and, and putting them low on the ground. They're like, oh, we, sh- we should do that. <laughs> <laughs> right. But that's where, they, that's where they see them. They see them at motorcycle right. shows. They see them out on the road. But yeah, but particularly at motorcycle shows. So there's an importance to company history here, um, motorcycle shows. But I also, you know, found it as I started getting into Mama Tried looking at other motorcycle shows you know other great motorcycle shows born free or, or congregation is that each motorcycle show kind of has its own thing it may all start at the same place it all seems to start with well we just wanted to get together and 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 party and and you know talk to our friends mm-hmm. but they all have this kind of different organizational organizational philosophy behind them as far as here are the bikes we're going to use or you know here's how we want to run this show or you know or, or whatnot and what i found interesting about mama tried was Again, it was local, so that that helped a lot. I didn't have to fly to California, or <laughs> you know, <laughs> or North Carolina, or North Carolina yeah. to to do a show. Um, uh, but it was this kind of like everything show. Let's just put it whatever. You know, <laughs> it, was, it was like oh, that's that's kind of not what I came to expect out of a motorcycle show. You know, like oh, you have your classes, you got your your custom you know, right. pan heads over here and you've got your, you know, choppers over here and you've got your bobbers over here and you've got, you know, yeah, yeah. and we're going to put them yeah. all in, you know, uh, baggers over there and there's the pros and yeah. these are the amateurs FXRs, and, yeah. and, and, uh, and then we're going to hand out awards. And it was like, there was none of that. It was just, we like these. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's the organizational yeah. philosophy. Yeah. We like these, these bikes. And then as I started getting into it, I realized, no, it's not the, bikes really it's the people behind the bikes that you you are far more interested in and that's something that we're far more interested in is is the people behind the bikes yeah 100. um and so it felt like a just a natural fit for us for our philosophy cool. of talking about people really kind of getting into people but also introducing kind of this new aspect of motorcycling to to people and, and I would nice. think, zooming in then, so uh, Flat Out Friday is Mama Tried in Movement. Is that fair? Sure. Is that a fair description? Yeah. Or, is, or is, does Flat Out Friday offer something a little different nuance in your eyes? Um, again, I think it's, it's, a similar, it's a similar philosophy. Um, there's, not <laughs> there's not a lot of places you can go for basic, oh, I, I've never ridden flat track before. Let me go grab my motorcycle <laughs> and go ride flat track. <laughs> this will be fun, right? <laughs> Nothing <laughs> bad will happen. <laughs> Or, or just the um, uh, there's a playfulness to it that doesn't exist in in professional or or amateur flat track racing. There's an, there's um, kind of you know <laughs> it's a it's what I imagine original racing must have been like. Like some guys just going, "Let's go!" Right. Yeah. And you won. Oh, good job. Yeah. You yeah. know, as yeah. opposed to now where it's like you won. I hate you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You and just took money out of my kid's mouth, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, by winning that race and I'm going to do better next time. Yeah. And let's put on a show and get butts in seats yeah. and, and have there be a party in right. the grandstands. Sure. Yeah. I, and if I can highlight without tuning tooting our horn, that 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 nuance is is curated. That isn't by right. chance. Um that's something that um, we work to make sure is part of what we do. That's part of the philosophy. Yeah. And if what we do ever strays from that, we slap each other across the face <laughs> and say, where are you going with this, Warren? This award part of the show. This is not our <laughs> philosophy. You know, and I think there's there's an accessibility there to both Mama Tried and, and Flat Out Friday that that is important to to us here at the museum. One of our kind of key phrases that we always say in meetings is, you know, our job at the museum is not to have somebody come through the doors and then an hour later buy their first motorcycle. Our, our job is to get them one step closer to motorcycles, but also to Harley-Davidson. And so how do we do that? And if they leave and they buy a T-shirt, then we've done our jobs. 
right. you know, they've, they've taken one more step into maybe something that'll, that'll change their lives. Yeah. Sure. Yep. That's Absolutely. Cool. When, when you telling the story about Mama Tried, you use the term artifacts. Just off the top of your head, why did you pick the artifacts you picked? Uh, some of it is uh, intentional. So, um, you know, the thing I, I love about Mama Tried is everything. It, okay. you know, it's, <laughs> an every, it's an everything show. Um, but, you know, when we're coming to the Harley Davidson Museum, I, you know, I can't do everything. I can't, sure, sure. I can't put a competitor motorcycle in the middle of my gallery. Um, so that was a challenge of, of how do I find a bunch of motorcycles that are all Harley Davidson's or at least, you know, were, were made by, by the corporation at some point um, and have them radically different from each other, you know, so they're not all just, here's a, here's 13 knuckleheads or here's, right. you know, boring, boring. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, here's, here's 15 panheads in yeah. a row and aren't they, yeah. they're sparkly and they're beautiful, yeah. aren't they? Um, so that, that was a challenging part of, of, you know, cause there were a lot, uh, <laughs> I cast my net really wide, not, not expecting a to, for people to go with their motorcycles for a year and a half. Cause that's a long time, especially if you're talking about somebody who's maybe giving up a bike that they ride, you know, I know in, in previous exhibits saying, Oh, we want your bike for four months. And they're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> now here I'm going 18 four months. months. Yeah. Um, that w- that was a big that was a big ask. That was a big ask. A and I was really surprised that as many people said, said "Oh no, yes. take my motorcycle." Yeah. That's a big so honor, man. It, it, yeah, but it's still a long time for sure. the bike that you love sure. riding every day. But imagine, right. imagine the you know the joy that that motorcycle brings to you on a daily basis. What it can bring to other folks, right. or how it could influence somebody else. Yeah, you know, moving forward, especially from yeah. a, a, a place like this. Right. That's awesome. But. And also yeah. all, all the l- the other thing that was kind of fun was all the little stuff that you wanted us to sort of compile, like all, yeah. the, all the old posters and artwork right. and uh, builder invites and yeah, uh, you know, we're, we're Jeremy's notes and Jeremy's, yeah. you know, all all just all the stuff, all the ephemera of the years, yeah. you know, Jeremy's a big jumpsuit one. and you know, <laughs> <Right>. like <laughs> all the. <laughs> <laughs> you know, all just all the mer- all the just merch and weird stuff, and we and piling all that stuff up at your right. shop. Still there, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's still there. It's still in a box <laughs> with <laughs> it's nicely. All packed the stuff you now, didn't pick, so yeah. yeah. I so organized like, oh, it better. Yeah, that reminds me. I left something in my trunk. I could give it to you after this. All right, all right. Um, uh, but that was but that going. was f- but that was fun. It was fun to put all that stuff together just for us to, to see know, all it, the stuff it, in one spot. Th- the motorcycles are awesome. The ephemera, I love. You know, because there's stories to that stuff too. Um, when you talk about an event like Mama Tried or Flat Out Friday, there's all this stuff that goes with it. It's the merch, it's the signs, it's the, you know, whatever. And there's so yeah. many people behind all that stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, the motorcycles are always the focus, but then there's all these other people. It's, it's, it's you know, Craig doing banners <laughs> that hang yeah. from the ceilings. Yep. It's, it's people designing T-shirts. It's, you know, yeah. people posters. designing posters. Yeah. It's tattoos. It's logos. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's all this stuff that goes into that into the event to make the event what it is, and that stuff's important too. Yeah. So what what's the? I'm I'm not ever looking for compliments in, in sincerity, but what's the what's the response? What do people th- feel when they come into this space, this part of the space? Do you, do you know? Is what's the whether any you know it, it is always it has it, so this is so there are weird parts of my job. Cause cause maybe I, you have don't a little, tell maybe you have a little regret. Regret. Maybe <laughs> yeah. it wasn't eighteen months. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think this is this is this is perfect. You know, again, um, there's some wild looking machines out here, and people are stopped and they look at it and mm-hmm. they go, "Oh my god!" You know. Do, do, do you think that you told? If I were to verbalize what Mama tried is to a person on the street, I see their eyes gloss over and they blink. And they, w- they don't get it. Do you feel that you've articulated what's going on with this, these artifacts you've used? Yeah, I think, th- I hope so. But, but you, you know, have it's, so it's always a hope. It's, it's <laughs> a bit of an art form here, Jeremy. It's always a hope that yeah. I've done my job. So then the, that's my, my, the, the, yeah. the, the rubber meeting the road of the question. Is that what people are saying or do they leave here confused and dazed? Because I think that's <laughs> kind of what they leave Flat Out Friday <laughs> feeling. <laughs> what did I just what witness? Did I, yeah, what, I just paid $25 <laughs> to... Do what? What was that? <laughs> right. But I feel I like I have more. a concussion. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I really hope so. You know, it does. People stop. They talk. Um, again, weird parts of my job is eavesdropping on people's conversations. As I want to do that. Gallery. 
it, it, I feel I'm, I'm divided about it because some of my some of the things I hear, I'm like, yeah, nailed it. And other times I'm like, I am listening to this person's conversation. <laughs> it's just actively. talking smack. That's right. Yeah, they're just, just sitting like, here talking. Oh, if you knew how much work went that's, into that, that pedestal. That's right. Exactly. Um, that's a that's a fun. I've never I've I've had that. I actually had that happen with this exhibit. Uh, and this is nothing to the exhibit. I think the guy was just in a bad mood. Uh, it was during the 120th. And, you know, we're like ramping up the exhibit and a lot of and people were loving it. You know, so this is just one guy out of uh, out of several thousand people who went through the museum and saw this exhibit and, and loved it. Uh, but this guy walks up to me and he goes, uh, they said at the front desk that there was a there was a new exhibit on. And I was like, yeah, we're standing in it. This is this is Mom and Try. And he looks around. And he goes, not worth it. And he walks. Up. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, you know, yeah. it, 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 that, that's what it's you like. Know, bad or- words, you buddy. Man. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it's like organizing. You get ten, you know, you get a thousand great jobs, and it's the one. Yeah, it just radiates through you. Right. Every yeah. 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 It's, yeah. It's, it's it's been Jeez. that way on every exhibit I've ever yeah. worked on. That's like the one yeah. bad comment or the yeah. one frustrating thing. Like you just don't get what I was trying to do there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, th- you know what, man? Take it as a compliment <laughs> too, because you know if you please everybody, you're probably not doing your job. You know what I mean? Like I don't know. I think I would be doing my job. I want to. I want to. P- I don't want to please everybody. I want. I want people to be thinking about like questioning whether they should be at the show or questioning whether they should be at the race. And with this right. little un- kind of uncomfortable nervousness that that all right, fuck it, I'm going. Yeah, I don't. I don't mind if people question my decisions as long as they're thinking about the decisions I made. Yeah, you know, do you think that guy? Had, that guy did this. Wait, wait. That, that like, guy wasn't. That guy. Uh, this was, is say, say, that, say that statement again. Say it. Uh, say it. I want to hear you say it again. What's that? It's not the decisions. Oh, if people are questioning the decisions I've made, I'm good with that because at least they're thinking about my decisions. Okay, um, so right, so you want you want a higher level. You don't want that's dumb. Yeah, you want someone to think. Oh, I wish, I wish that this poster was red. Yeah, or or I wish he had he had explored this part of sure, of that, the topic. That, and there might be reasons I couldn't do it. Mm-hmm. There might be reasons that I just I just couldn't get to that point. You know, again, we're in an exhibit. So like the one thing that kept coming up was how do we talk about musicians in this in the exhibit and I'm like I don't have anything for musicians I don't can't put a drum kit in the exhibit I don't have any space and right. and uh, I guess we could hang a guitar but then we gotta find somebody's guitar we could hang up so we've got a chicken of, or a chicken we've got a chicken <laughs> uh, we've got a picture of uh, uh, the uh, rhythm chicken the rhythm chicken <laughs> yes. over here and that was kind of what we did but it it felt like. God, you know, I wish there was like one musical act that was just associated with you. Yeah, we, or, or the DJs or something. You like, can hire oh, that guy. Turntable, yeah. or you know, come here and do that. So yeah. that one was kind of like, okay, you know, if somebody complains to me about that, there's a reason. But at least they're thinking, thinking about the the ex- their experience at that mm-hmm. yeah. place. And and more importantly, if they're thinking about it, you know, museums are social spots. They're mm-hmm. not you. Other than other than other museum professionals, uh, I don't know of a lot of people who go to museums alone. They go with somebody, and then they talk about what they're seeing, um, and that's important. So if we're if we're doing that and we're eliciting that kind of conversation, then we're doing we're doing our jobs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I want to pause and, and, and again get a little personal and say that it really means a lot to me that I that something that I've done is is part of this very prestigious palatial yeah. museum. Yeah, exactly. I, I, it's I, a I, huge honor for us. Straight massive, up, massive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, That's I mean massive. it means it means far deeper than just some sort of no. business I'm running. It really means no. something to my family, uh, to to my whole family name, the lineage of who I am that I'd be associated with this organization that you run. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It, it's uh, this That's is this happens a lot, uh, um, and I always feel kind of weird about it because at the same time I'm always like, man, these people have given me their time. <laughs> They've given me their boxes of stuff. <laughs> Keep it. They've given me their their you know their motorcycles, and they're like, "Oh, it's such an honor." I'm like, "No, it's it's all on this side of the table." It really feels like that sometimes because it's like I wouldn't be able to do what I do without everybody else. You know. Well, you're crushing it. Yeah. Well, thank you. You're yeah. crushing the yeah. museum world. In your <laughs> You're crushing anybody that lay in the wake of the Harley Davidson story. I'll, I'll put that on my next resume. There yes. you go. Crushed it. At the <laughs> Bottom of the business card. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> I'll, I'll write right. you a reference. <laughs> okay. Well, we're we're almost wrapping up. Uh, I, I, w- what's next? Is that are you? I don't. You're not allowed to say much. 
about that kind of thing. But 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 what's next? I mean, you, you make it. You make an exhibit, and now you sit for eighteen months. No, and like I, you're I, playing solitaire I, in your room I, until <laughs> exactly Eric knocks right. on the door, and then you bring up your emails. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> that's exactly what happens. You know, they call me, and I'm like, oh man, I got to go actually do some work. Okay, I guess. <laughs> Uh, no, the next exhibit starts planning now, um, has been for, for a couple months and that's the exploratory phase takes a while, you know, cause you're really trying to figure out yeah. that's a I topic. To, I used you to know. tell my mom when she knocked on the bathroom door. <laughs> 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 okay, but, and, and but, but you need, I, need some, I need a little more specifics. Just give me. Exploratory phase, well, because you have to immerse yourself. I've got to immerse myself. I've also got to look at a lot of different, um, you know, I always say the boring stuff. So what's our schedule? You know, what else is going up between now and then? Um, you know, how long the show is going to be up? Um, how do you so get this built? How do you get that? How built? do we get this built? How do we get well, that? Well, I, I was even I was even going zooming out a little bit. You know, you hey, <coughs> let's explore women in motorcycles. Say right. for example. And you have this idea, you've done a little research, and then whoever your team is is like, meh. meh. I've had that happen. I had this exhibit topic a few years ago, which I, I loved the idea of, and it was about, it's hard to explain, which is why no one liked it. Uh, but <laughs> I, did all, I did all this research into like, oh, we'll do skateboarding, and we'll do, you know, anybody that customizes anything that they ride on. And I'm all Western saddles and motorcycles, and it'll just be, it'll be amazing. And everyone's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> We- awesome West know, Western sounds, saddles. Yeah, what is the what is the main through line story? I'm like, it's about customizing, customizing. your your thing that you're yeah, riding on. But yeah. why horses and motorcycles, or why horses and skateboards? What about surfboards? I'm like, well, it's about things you can go from one point A to point B. And everyone's like, this is really getting too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would have gone to it. Yeah, yeah. we all go to. <laughs> you know, that's when we we noticed in Asia that a motorcycle show includes those things. R- right, break dancing, rap, yeah. tennis yeah. shoes, anything you customize was street con- culture. Was yeah. right. custom culture. Yeah. Right. So don't give up on that idea. I, yeah. I haven't yet. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I actually I, coming out of this one, I was like, oh, I need to screw around with that idea more. Um, and now it's you know a million miles away from that. But uh, uh, it's something I you know I before I retire, I will have a Western saddle in the Harley. Okay. Space <laughs> okay. <game. laughs> Wait, here's one question that I've been me I've been I've been wanting to ask you if in. You you sound like you s- you said you're a very thoughtful person. You don't really have many hobbies outside of like the museum world. You think about this stuff a lot. You're you're history buff. If you could have, if you I always say history professional, all right. not a history buff. All right, yeah, that's I true. I get paid. I get paid for this. Take that, Scott. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> I was thinking of the history part of it as like your or motorcycle uh, show buff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, no, the the personal interest that you have in in history and growing up around that stuff. Not to denigrate your role, and but be that as it may, if you had, if you could do any subject, and and, it had, and you had a unlimited checkbook on any subject, like what oh. kind of museum exhibition would you like? I don't know. You know, do you, ever, uh, you ever think of like have dreams about I, like a? You, you know, know, I get. Uh, once upon a time, I thought, oh, I'll become an expert in this in right. this thing, but I just don't find now. I'm so lucky to have come to work here right. because I realize I don't need to be an expert in this one topic area because right. I want to know about it all. Right. You know, uh, uh, the, my last museum at the, at the Durham in, in Omaha, I got really fascinated with sugar beets. Right. And so I can get <laughs> interested with, you know what a sugar beet is? No. Okay. So most of the sugar that we use on a day to ba- day basis comes from a beet. Huh. It doesn't come from, from sugar, cane. sugar cane. It comes from a beet really? that somebody's growing in in Nebraska or Wyoming. H- hence the red red velvet cake. Right. It's I don't know. It's from red from the beet. Oh, okay. Okay, sorry. Keep I going. don't know that that's true, but well, we'll yeah. go with it. It sounds good. <laughs> I'm a I'm a <laughs> so I'm a sugar beet buff. Oh, okay. So <laughs> I know okay. A thing so you know. So I, I, I find <laughs> this and I just I can't get it out of my mind. I'm like, I got to do an exhibit about this. And everyone at my museum is like, Are you kidding? <laughs> 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 T-shirt sales on that alone. <laughs> That's right. The sugar bean <laughs> exhibit, um, and and so, but I just get fascinated with these topics, these connections, these yeah. things about our lives that we just don't know are happening. 
you know, that, yeah. that are in the background that are like, oh my God, it's, it's sugar beet. Sure. That's sugar. what I'm saying. So, so a sugar beet. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, I do a sugar beet. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I, I want to, the way that you see museuming, again, l- listening to the words you're using, you're not honing in like a laser in your, in your zooming in. As a matter of fact, you working here at the Harley Davidson Museum, you're, you're, you're expanding your knowledge on, on the side, wide, right? You're right. not going in, you're going sideways. Yeah, to, in, a, to in, a certain in, degree. And infinitely, the motorcycle culture is infinite sideways. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, you can reach a point if you hone in. Yeah. Is this is this imagery making sense? No, yeah. I think that's that's exactly right. And I think, you know, even for people involved in, in motorcycling, I don't, you know, the, the width and breadth of, of what they love, I don't think they know the ends of it. Mm-hmm. You know, right. um, I agree with that. They don't know uh, where a lot of blinders, a lot of blind. Well, it's blinders, but it's also just not knowing. Just haven't been there yet. You just yeah. haven't. You didn't know right. about this. You didn't know about. Right. You know, What's there's a, a bunch of drag the racers out there doing this thing right. and they completely are wired differently than you are mm-hmm. or, or flat trackers are out doing this thing. And they're, you know, a little bit wired different than you are. And, and how are they wired and how did they get to here? And and. Um, or what is the difference between a guy who rides a bagger and a guy who rides a sports bike or, mm-hmm. or, or you know, um, you know, um, was in Boston last week and, and was at, uh, uh, Madhouse Motors. Um, and that is a completely different experience. Right. Have you ever been to her I've shop? I've never been to her shop, no. but it's, it's crazy. And I, I, I was telling, I, I was, I was talking with her and, and interviewing her a little bit and, uh, uh, you know, she had to go take care of some customers and was sitting in her cafe because she's got this like full blown cafe yeah, on the side of really her shop. Yeah, really gorgeous too, right? Yeah, really gorgeous cafe. Good food, you know, <laughs> eating good food at a mechanic shop. Right. And and there's these big bay windows that look over her shop, and you know, one of her mechanics is in there changing, doing tune up on a motorcycle or whatnot. And there's these three women from the neighborhood, and they're talking about motherhood, <laughs> like like a high philosophical conversation about motherhood. And in the background, zzz, 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 and I'm thinking, this is just a different <laughs> <That's> experience. <awesome. laughs> I've never, you know, this is the farthest thing from a motorcycle mechanic mm-hmm. repair shop. You know, this conversation that's happening right yeah. here. And you know, that's something new for me. Yep. And it's probably new, new for, for a lot of people. For a lot of right. people, you know. Um, and so every time, everyone has a different kind of right. take, a different kind of story. And those are the things I like exploring. Yeah, the novelty. Sure. That's yeah. cool. All right. Well. I, how are we doing on time? We're doing great. People, we feel little people could only handle an hour of this. <laughs> Is that fair? I could talk more about museum you conferences if you want me to. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's really talk uh, about well, humidity. Well, well I, but I do. I just do, I want to <laughs> highlight on that point about the diversity of motorcycles because again, yeah. I'm bringing I'm bringing people together here, right? That's yeah. the full thing. The diversity. Uh, women alone in a motorcycle shop. A women run motorcycle shop, right? Right. Of these uh, of the mad J. Yeah. yeah. Of um, in Boston. These are, I don't know, this is a fairly new language that's happening. It's, a, it's actually a fairly old language that's happening. It's, it's what did I, what I say the other day? It's, it's not that, that women haven't ever ridden motorcycles. And in fact, in our company's history, some of the most important early employees were women. Um, uh, um, and it, they've just always been kind of shunted to the background. And so this is... the. This is not them. Um, this is not them emerging onto some stage sure, they haven't sure. been shared of. You know, look at um, one of my favorite women from Harley history is, is Dot Robinson. Um, you know, she and her husband Earl owned a Harley dealership in Detroit, and she and her husband Earl, not not her husband Earl, and she was just there tagging along. It was she and you know, you look at Claire dealer information up in the archives is like nope, Dot and or Earl and Dot Robinson. She was a racer. She did the Jack Pine on a twin <laughs> you know, Harley sidecar rig Bad uh, mama. you know she and she won she didn't just you know she just didn't you know she won and that was in the 30s and that was in the 40s right and so you know this isn't I don't see this as oh this is women merging on the sure, scene sure. they've never existed here before it's like no they they've been here we just we just really need to kind of circle back around and go <laughs> they've been here yeah so I appreciate right that perspective yeah I, I bold statement. You're mu- you are much appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> the, the whole the whole bit, right? The language, your knowledge, uh, and your talents are much appreciated. So we're 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 wrapping up here with our uh, Harley Davidson headquarter museum. Yeah, you want to do some? <laughs> why don't you do some housekeeping? You know, where 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 do you send them? Where do you know? Kind of websites and 
you know, plug, people want to buy tickets. Yeah, on, how long? Like, uh, you can go to hdmuseum.com um, to see our, our hours of operation and when we're open. And uh, Yeah, come on. Um, if you're in town, come on Thursday nights in the summer. and Come on Thursday nights in the summer for bike, for night. bike night. It's a great, um, great restaurant. We um, have an awesome gift shop. The, some of the some of the best and, and finest motorcycle clothing, period, in that gift shop from my perspective. Yeah. And there's I'm going to let you make that statement and so yeah. I don't get in... Uh, you kind of and there's Mama Tried and Photo Friday merch in the gift shop too, which there is, is, which is yeah. another huge honor. And and so. the Mama Tried uh, Bring It Together exhibit will be open through January of twenty twenty five. Wow! Wow! So, yeah, we still got a whole another. I want to ride, year. ride. I want to coast my bike off the lift when it when it comes off. Yeah, you're gonna have to take that with Chris. All right, I'll talk to him. <laughs> I got a, I got a year. Bring some oil. Wear them down. <laughs> you got to bring some oil. Yeah. <laughs> As well as gas. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be checking in monthly to make sure you're d- it'll be a care check. Fair. Yeah. Fair. All right. Well, we're clapping it up for you, David. Thanks, right. David. Good job, man. No really problem. appreciate Thank you. it.